You're listening to Errol Parker and Clancy Overall, editors of the Batuta Advocate on Desert Rock FM. Well, it's Ashes Eve. We're here in the uh, Baxter Boot Studios in downtown Batuta, Daru Street. This is going to be our third repeat guest, I think. Errol, I think we, we second. Had, no, we had Becky Lucas on twice, and then we had Taito Ivasa. And in the uh, theme of having great sports analysts uh, like Taito Ivasa, Rennie Matua, Willie Mason, Lena Ferguson, we've decided to catch up with the great cricketer boys. How are you? Good, thanks, gentlemen. Good to be in Batuta, some esteemed company that you've just put us in there. That's actually something that I'll take to the grave up there with Renny Matur and Willie Mason. That's, the dogs of war. Yeah, absolutely. Un- <laughs> unleash them. Don't worry, let's never speak of O2 again. <laughs> mm. and, O4's what we talk about. Mm. <laughs> and we also had uh, ET in here the other day. Did you? Yeah. To talk all things, you know, Marlon, mm. Flathead. Paul Miller. Yeah. Someone's... Why? That will be. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch Healy. He was very earnest, wasn't he? Well, ET? there were lots of people who were asked in the comments of that. They were like, hey, mm. boys, great one, but you didn't mention Paul Miller. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, you know. <laughs> he was the first Hillsong, yeah. first Hillsong rebrand, though. That's, that was the first get out of jail card. I think a few people have done, done it since. Like, you go Christianity light, mm. and you can yeah. pretty much be forgiven for. Well, you've done, but Jared Hayne. I was just going to yeah. say, seems yeah. he to have gone. It. He's gone the worse. He's gone. He's gone worse since he yeah. converted. So Christianity is very important in sport right now, and yeah. cricket in particular. It's yeah, yeah. Really any, taking over. Any um, heavy clappers in in the Australian cricket side? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Starts at the top. Yeah. I mean, yeah. JL's a is a huge. He's huge for it. Mm-hmm. Just not not just the traditional yeah, religion, but he's also the new age. Oh yeah, he's. Yeah. yeah, he's more energies though. Yeah. Chakras. No, but he's um he's chakras. had some discussions with Manus Labushakni and others yeah. around faith. All right. and, he, no, um, he's a, he, JL's a stated public man of faith. He told a story recently about when he scored his two hundred and fifty on Boxing Day. Uh, what year was that? Two thousand six, maybe two thousand. Yeah, one of them. Two thousand two, thousand two, three, or whatever. Mm. We were good. Mm. He uh, Richie Benno commented when he was on 170 not out that he looked to be in a meditative state and he since said well Richie had no idea because when Langer went to scratch his guard into the crease so for those listening you, you take centre to know where your centre stump is mm-hmm. he couldn't actually get a line scrape so he did it sideways so he did it kind of horizontally and when he looked down he saw that he'd made a perfect cross oh my God. and from that and, and so he looked at that cross really? this is true story right. look at eternity.com as I was last night eternity.com uh, I thought it was because he saw Jesus in his jam scarlet tea <laughs> it could have been that That's as well but he, he, <laughs> Lang is a stated man of faith right. and now Bancroft who looks to be set to be recalled uh, is a yoga instructor. Martin Slobiskakny is a man of faith. He has an eagle uh, sticker on his bat and his favourite uh, Isaiah quote. Uh, this is the new way to, to make the is Australian it? side. And the Australian team is sponsored by GoFundMe as well. Australian Chris and all. Well, you saw when the uh, English side uh, won the Cricket World Cup, a couple of blokes jumped out of the photo when the uh, champagne came out. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> yeah. That might have been uh, yeah. something to do with their faith as well. Yeah, yeah it certainly wasn't Ben Stokes. I think uh, <laughs> he's... Uh, I'd say he find God when he was locked up. Oh, he wasn't locked up, was no, he? No, well, well I think yeah. the only faith he'd have now would be uh, going for the All Blacks in the World Cup. Mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking back now to England. Who was it that, mm. that uh, Warner put on their ass out front of the... Joe Root. Joe Root. Yeah. Allegedly, Joe Root. He brushed his beard. He had a swing at him in a walkabout bar. Joe Root was wearing a beard, which was... He was dressed up as um, Hashim Amla. Who yeah. Dave Warner had an affinity to. Dave Warner protected Hashim's honour, much mm. like Ben by punching Stokes in the face. Much like Brent Stokes protected the the gay um, person that was same situation, the, yeah. exactly the same situation, yes. just leaving in someone's defence. Yes, just protection. <laughs> yeah, when that guy was lying on the ground, he thought, "Well, I need to protect myself." Mm. Yeah. Well, you know that that was his vice captain now. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. that was the exact same thing that happened uh, at the Bourbon and Beefsteak all those years ago. Mm. When I think it was Justin Langer who came in for the defence of Ricky Ponting. Mm. Uh, poor young Ricky at the time was getting flogged and in comes... It was a hate crime. Big <laughs> Justin. <laughs> and uh, and everyone knows that he's a uh, black belt in uh, mm. Taekwondo, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. He, he kicked 
that bloke in the head apparently so hard that they almost had some lockout laws then. Yeah. Oh my Cross. god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would have been 14, 14 years earlier. That's so. huge. Yeah. Like, Deal with what was going on around then too. You know, yeah. George Freeman was still on the cross, and that still yeah. made people mm. kind of <laughs> blood curdle. Yeah. Uh, this is pre Ibrahim, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's it's, when things were really bad before things got cleaned up by the, <laughs> by the gentleman. But you know, speaking of, we'll just jump uh, sporting codes again. Speaking of mm. heroic uh, sports stars, did you see yesterday uh, down in Bondi, Dylan Napper's neighbour's house lit on fire, and he ran in with the garden hose <laughs> and put it out. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm sure he fucked up a few computers and TVs in the, main, in the meanwhile, but he extinguished the neighbour's house fire. Which, uh, no similar heroes. I live in down in Melbourne, so that didn't that hadn't made the um, Herald Sun back pages. Um, yeah, yeah. It's usually about four What's or five pages of yeah, yeah. yeah. AFL Super yeah. Coach yeah. chat before uh, anything else happens. That's a front page yeah. actually. So, yeah. Front page touches for Dusty on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, front page when we were down there was yeah the the top uh, eighteen ACL injuries of all time. Yeah, um, that was yeah. before any mention of the yeah. cricket. Yeah, that was before the England World Cup. That was on sound alone, too. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are your thoughts for the Ashes, guys? How are you feeling? Nerves? Well, I haven't felt anything in years. Yeah. I don't have any feelings. As First, a, as there's too much Coca-Cola in the bloodstream. Mm. But there is a problem that I think Australia can win, mm. which yeah. which makes me worried. Because going into, like, previous, you know, Ashes series basically since 2001, which is when we last week yeah. won, it's just like, no, well, no dramas. We'll just get dusted up there and then we'll, mm. we'll beat them 5 0 when they come back here. So this series doesn't matter. But I think Australia can actually win. Mm. Yeah. So maybe, like, I got some trepidation. I might actually start watching the games. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, well, it has been a very, very long time since we have sort of won there. And our last big win there, I, I guess, was overshadowed by what happened in 9 11 just a few <laughs> weeks after our. <laughs> Well, in some victory. circles, well, yeah. but 9/11 yeah. yeah. didn't happen though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just that's the problem. Yeah, Bush did both though. Mm. Yeah, he won mm. the Ashes and 9/11. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was overshadowed, and we've had a troubled relationship with England over the years. I, I guess I, is it still a thing that the day honestly over there think it's a gentleman's game? Is that still how they feel about it? There's a bit of that because it, it, you know since the days of old. It's never really been that in, in recent memory. In televised cricket in Australia, it's yeah. never really been that. Remember, it's always been the fucking open collars and gold chains and the and the Westy look that yeah. was mm. was so big in Australian yeah. cricket. They were never considered gentlemen, surely. No, it's mm. gentry in the UK. It's like mm. very yeah. posh. It's played in private schools, oh, right. um, in in private gardens. It's in not the UK. played at Madrigal Sports High. Exactly mm. in Australia, it's very no. blue collar, working class mm. cricket, which is why we've acted like fuckwits for so many years. Mm. That's why some uh, people <laughs> towns will get a start, you know, unlike you know. Other other sporting cards um but yeah it, it's kind of tour de france level over there is it yeah like um one of the most famous english performances in the ashes like pantheon was ian botham at uh headingley in 1981 yeah. and there's a noted author over there marcus berkman who's sort of uh written for wisdom and um all bunch of other books as well who said like you know the botham's performance where he sort of hit took six for hit 50 then 149 not out England turned around the game to win against the great Dennis Lilly and Jeff Thompson it was like it's like the bedtime story for children over there that's yeah. how it's got a very pure yeah. kind of feel over there it is the gentleman's game yeah. it's just when you go back to look at that game you, you actually learn that Dennis Lilly bet uh, on England to win that game um, <laughs> and, and that's the official story yeah. <laughs> uh, that the rest of the team possibly did as well uh, not yeah to well defame. and I guess by 1981 you know like mm. I think the Jeff Thompson and Dennis surely by 19. 19- 81 were fucked yeah you know like you can't bowl that fast yeah. for that long and not be fucked yeah you know, i think and well like it, I, I think i think they've been doing some autopsies yeah. on recent fast yeah. bowlers the yeah. demon spoffer and they've mm. found the evidence of cte and mm. the sort it's a whole thing there, so. <laughs> in their shoulders yeah. cte yeah. in their in shoulders, shoulders yeah. Yeah. yeah and in the spine well yeah. well everyone does know that uh a fast bowler they don't have a brain in their head they have it in their spine and their shoulders. Mm-hmm. But Brett Lee anyway. set up a F45 franchise in Mumbai, so he mm. must have some kind of brains to him. Yeah. Yep. I think. yeah. Shane Watson's involved in that, who I presume yeah. is the brains of the operation mm. and the chest. He used to be able to bowl 140. The That's true. Mm. And the yeah. hair. Mm. What's Brett then? The glutes. Yeah. Not sure. He's definitely yeah. the glutes. Yeah. Now, there's a big difference between the grade cricketers. Obviously, you know, that's, your, uh, that's who you represent um, when you're over there in England and when you're on the microphone and, uh, you know, in every thing you guys do you represent the great cricketers the the eternal kind of could have been would have been could still be's in that great mm. game the biggest difference between the ashes and, and cricket of that level and the great cricket is touring 
which when you talk to professional cricketers, they spend so much time talking about touring, like how mad it is, like they've never been on a sleepover before. Mm. But <laughs> the, have you experienced, and can you tell us some of the perks uh, for you know our listeners that might not be experienced with touring on a grade cricket level? Like, what are we talking? Are we talking Marucci door trip, or right. have you done it? Or is it? Does it just not happen? Sometimes you you know get on the um you know the road out to Campbelltown uh, for a game if you're in an inner city yeah. Sydney team and that feels like a tour yeah. and so you know that will involve uh, getting picked up by uh, the captain maybe he'll stop at McDonald's uh, he'll ask what you want but you have to pay for it yourself yeah. you'll there'll be an awkward conversation about uh, whether you owe him for petrol or not <laughs> you know you might um. Mm-hmm. You might get a power rate along the way. You might mm-hmm. you might then forget that you haven't got afternoon tea yet. So sort of double back around <laughs> yeah. or wonder what's in your kit bag. This is sort of the, the, this is the you know, perils of touring. There's no exhibition cricket. matches preseason mm-hmm. where you go to the, you, you where can. you go to a shitty mm-hmm. coastal town. You can or? organise those, mm-hmm. and sometimes mm-hmm. it's good to get that good hit out against a rough country or, mm-hmm. or coastal outfit who can really show you what it's like out in the in the real world mm-hmm. when you're in your sequestered grade cricket environment. Mm-hmm. You know, paying two thousand dollars for kit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Five hundred for subs, mm. you know, eighty dollars on petrol just to get to a game out in Campbelltown. It's mm. a different world in the grey cricket sphere. You got to have money, is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, just as a sidebar, are you guys aware that you can buy a bat on eBay from India that is made in, say, homage to a uh, a very expensive kookaburra or a grey nickels? It is the middle of winter here and I'm gearing up to uh, are you talking to, about uh, are, you trying, are, you trying ver- are you trying to verify purchase are you talking about the cashmere dispute yeah no I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm just asking <laughs> if you guys have ever had experience with buying a bootleg cricket bat off the internet yeah, not me personally but I did play with a guy who did buy a bat off eBay yeah. from India, the ones you're talking about. Yeah. And this thing weighed, it was like a railway sleeper. It was obviously <laughs> like, it was like four pounds, this yeah. thing, this, this weight. Yeah. Like a heavy bat's three pounds, this thing was four pounds yeah. easily. It, it came over in six parts, mm. honestly. Yeah. 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 Well, I well, yeah. 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 home. Yeah. I, I, and this is before Air Tasker. <laughs> it took, it took yeah. ages. I have heard that Glenn McGrath used to carry a heavy bat because at the moment now yeah. I have a, uh, I have a county and it's, uh, and I, I feel it partly responsible for me averaging eight right. as, as yeah. a number four last uh, year. Yes. I thought you were referring so. to Glamagrass rifle. Yeah. <laughs> oh. he, does. He, has, he seems to have one of them as well. Yeah. 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 He enjoys yeah. it. Well, the picture was taken out of context. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. That was such a dead big cat. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um. Well, there was the elephant, the buffalo, which yeah. just... which yeah. just Big six? No, yeah. but like... Yeah. <laughs> just quietly, if I could... Get away with it. I'd fucking shoot. There's plenty of land animals you can... (laughs) There's plenty of land animals you can shoot in Australia. How else are you... Like you've only got one opportunity to see and touch an elephant, you know, like... Shoot it. Shoot it. Get it. Touch it as it's dying. Yeah. Yeah. Get to see it alive. Just be like... Nice. What? Yeah. All right, tangent here, but what would be the biggest non-endangered animal you'd be able to shoot without people looking at you funny? Non-endangered? Yeah. Probably Chris Tremlett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, an elephant is a, yeah. it's 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 if it's up there with probably being more hectic than a shooting dolphin? a person. Yeah, it's so yeah. big because yeah. it has to mm. come down so yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shooting down a plane. Yeah. You shoot yeah. down an elephant. You can, you can shoot yeah. heaps of people in various countries <laughs> yeah. if you need. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shoot, yeah. You need to. Yeah. yeah, shooting a dolphin. They've all yeah. got personality. It's yeah. anyway. Commercial moving on, moving on. Because he has moved on, and so has the Australian media cycle. So we'll move on from uh, <laughs> from that particular holiday. Tell us what you're thinking about the Ashes. Yeah, like you know, oh, yeah. Birmingham, the and then and then where do we go? Well, uh, like the, in sort of contrast to my, my colleague Higos's uh, views, like I, I think Australia will be up against it. Like I think if Australia wins, it will probably be the like greatest away win since India 04. Uh, right. We've not been able to like score a run over there in about 20 years. That's due to like some you know fundamental technical issues that have essentially been installed by Greg Chappell uh, and his um, demonic system. Mm-hmm. So like three or four guys are going to have to very much surprise us for Australia to get on top of England. They know how to play over there. 
you know, sorry for the serious analysis. The problem is that, seconds. like, edge bass in the first, where the first test is in Birmingham is like England's Gabba, where, mm. like, Australia just always win. So, mm. like, you always start the series 1 0 up. And that's, yeah. that's a problem. And Australia suck in Birmingham. Mm. We played this, we played the semi final there in the World Cup. Yeah. You know, we gave them a game in the fact that we turned up. Yeah. Um, and then they, they chased our runs. You noticed that um, <laughs> on the scoreboard at Edge and they've mm. still left the scorecard from the semi final, just a little bit of microaggression from the English. Yeah. So, when the Australians turned up to go to training, I'm like, oh, fuck mm. yeah, we lost that game. But they did. England does microaggression very well, as a country yeah. you have to say. Well, they, yeah, I was gonna, well, they did because they took the because Australia were warming up on the ground that morning. That's why they left the scoreboard up there. But mm. then, like within three minutes of Australia going on the ground, they took the scoreboard down. So right. if you had to commit, well, job to done. It, mm. Yeah, job, job done. done. Like yeah. play highlights on the screen, like mm. fully. Well, that's like, what Australia go do. With, you know, big giant blue hand saying four four yeah. nil. Mm. You know, that's how we celebrate. <laughs> Which is still on the SCG. Yeah, it's still, still there. Yeah, moment. Yeah. 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 That's part of the Senate wicket dispute, actually. The SCG trust needs to get rid of that. Except for run around it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Australia can't score a run really, so no. something fun, like different's going to have to happen. But uh, yeah. you know, we have a big, a good pace attack. But mm. yeah, I mean, so do England. Mm. And also, yeah, issue, yeah. yeah, England can't score runs either. I mean, yeah. in mm. one day as they can, but we saw what happened with them in against mm. Ireland the other mm. day. I mean, they won mm. and they needed to win that because mm. it would have been a horrible embarrassment out of the Ashes. But fuck me, that was a game. Mm-hmm. A lot of wickets tumbling. I think it's yeah. just a Probably yeah, like globally no, nobody, batting. Nobody can bat anymore mm. uh, in cricket, which mm. like, people think that's a technical issue. I think it's a like a climate change issue, mm. really. Global it's a global yeah, yeah. warming has affected wickets. It's yeah. an attention and issue. It's yeah. just too hot out there in the yeah. T20. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> like if, Short, if Shorten brings that like meaningful yeah. climate change policy, but he pitches it differently to the electorate, if he says, you know, I, I will... I will guarantee us six hundreds at the Ashes mm. and address climate change. He's he's the prime minister. He should, have said, he should have said six tons of the Ashes. Six tons. That's really all, all he should have said. Mm. Yeah. Now that is an issue that you hear from dribblers uh, is that these kids are being taught to hit fifty immediately yeah. Yeah. from yeah. day one. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And in, so, in fact, in some age groups, I can't remember, you're not allowed to hit over 50 yeah. because it's kind of, not it's all to, that, yeah. everyone gets a prize kind yeah. of yeah. Yeah. attitude where, you, you yeah, know, yeah. kids are, because, you know, there's always that kid who can fucking really play cricket <laughs> and he discourages a lot of other kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's yeah. the kid that should get to the top because he's hungry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That kid fucking I earned it. That's a fucking dumb rule because you have these kids who can hit 50 in no time flat, but, <clears> you know, you're not going to come in and say oh you've been taking too many wickets we're going to take you off yeah. you've got these people who take eight for six yeah and then yeah and the, 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 then those poor other kids get an over and a half yeah. each and then this mm. guy steams in again and yeah. and and gets the last two wickets Great points. Like, let, and every, let them bat everyone mm. go home yeah. Yeah. yeah everyone's had it some form of humiliation as a youngster i, I don't yep. think that's in the same yep. kind of realm as capital punishment i think mm. you know you hear mm, people of yesteryear talk about oh, i got the cane it did nothing wrong to me and the, you know they're in prison mm. greens and they're saying all that kind of shit but mm. you never hear someone saying i stopped playing cricket when we versed kyle from <laughs> you know, yeah. mataborough yeah. who was yeah. 13 and got 300 against us yeah. uh, you well, never hear thanking that. kyle for the life lesson that's <laughs> yeah. you know, what's gonna yeah. be like in you know in the, in the workplace in relationships you're gonna get yeah. mouthed at some point <laughs> you're gonna fucking you're gonna right now. yeah Mm. Has anyone here ever received a mercy rule in any capacity? No, I've inflicted one, yeah. but I've never... <laughs> <laughs> AFL under 12s, yeah. mercy rule. Um, but I've never been on the yeah the other side. Oh, Phil, hey. Phil Jakes made um, 321 against the team I was in uh, <laughs> once. And like the the embarrassment was that like as he kept racking like going past milestones, people were like oh you've just gone past Bradman, oh you've just gone past like Steve Waugh, just oh you're nearing I Trumper. That. But <laughs> yeah. that was in like 2008, wasn't it? Yeah, or something? yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That's we, pretty- we lost outright. Yeah, that's pretty. I think anyone though who's played cricket and like in a, t- in a two day aspect. When the team chasing has passed your total, mm. but the game can't finish until like you know tea time mm. on day two or whatever for some nefarious reason, and the other team just keeps batting. Mm. So like they they hit like the four to like pass your total, and then yeah. everyone's like, all right, we're gonna. Yeah. And the ca- captain's like in the dressing room, just with his arms arms folded. Just be like, yeah. no, no, we're gonna give some <laughs> gonna give some of our blokes a hit for finals, yep. which we won't make because we're a terrible yeah. team as well. Yeah, we're near we're nearing a record. There's, there's often that. Oh no, they're they're on for a yeah. record. Oh yeah. great. Sweet. Oh, he's on sixty, so we're gonna get him get hundred. Yeah, that's all. yeah. <laughs> and then it's the most demoralising thing. Yeah, you're basically getting kyled. That's when it get cricket. That's when cricket becomes a like a ruthless jungle. <laughs> like when the game should be over, but someone decides that you've got to yeah. keep going. That's One when person the, the opposition yeah. becomes feral. Yeah, like I was in a game once where that happened and like this was a it was a decent level like decent level and our guys in our team started sitting on the ground like sat on the yeah. ground someone 
started bowling left-handed when they were right-handed. Like, it was just bringing the entire game into disrepute. Mm. We were an average club, both performatively and in t- and morally. Yeah. Uh, Didn't someone tell us a story last week about it was an AFL game last week in Melbourne? Someone lost by 500 points? Yeah. Ooh. this is. A, but this doesn't that give you some heart on the flip side for Australia that, that stuff like that still happens? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, some yeah. deep humiliation. Yeah. Over in India, it happens yeah. as well. Every now and then yeah. you read about an Indian kid who's gone and hit 1,200 <laughs> yeah, 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 in, yeah. in, in, yeah. in yeah. a 12s game. Yeah. And he's yeah. the next Sachin. Yeah. I read yeah. about that. That day and they've got yeah. an official umpire, so it official. Yeah. 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 it's like an official yeah. record. Yeah. Well, look where they are, they're number yeah. one test nation, so yeah. there's something in yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, rise in the middle it, yeah. class, 1.2 billion people. <laughs> it's only going to get worse for us. So, uh, yeah. I'm in China. Just going back to the Ashes for a minute. Um, <laughs> we touched on a small issue a couple of minutes ago about um, we don't have any batsmen that can score runs, they don't have any batsmen that can score mm. runs. We don't have any bowlers that can take wickets. They don't have any bowlers <laughs> that can take Should wickets. Be a good <laughs> Do you think this will come down to who's got a better command over the Dukes? Mm. You think you know mm, because always. we as a nation can't take wickets with a Dukes ball. Yes. Um, so do you think that's going to be the defining edge in this series? Yeah. Is it? Like as, as always with cricket, like you, you think, oh, well, it should be a great matchup of skill. Mm. It should be, you know, which team has the best system, has the best junior pathways, products coming through. <laughs> you know, who, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, like, like who's got the best um, yeah. middle class? No, like, like India. But, uh, so basically but, whoever is the polar opposite of the Wallabies and yes. Australian Rugby Union in but, general. But at the start of this series, um, like the news emerged out of the UK and this was clearly brilliant briefed, you know, to the UK press from the powers that be in England. Like, they, um, their officials approached, uh, like, the warehouse in Walthamstow that creates the Duke's balls and asked them to put together a darker Duke's ball. So, like, the darker the, the cricket ball, the more it moves around and the yeah, scarier right. pr- the prospect it is for Australia. So, the Ashes may have been one with the selection of Duke's balls in England more than anything else which is the most English fucking thing you've ever heard in your life uh, I presume well we've tried to bring in we, we played the back half of the Sheffield Shield last season with the Dukes ball mm. which, we started using their ball we started yeah. using their ball which means fuck all because yeah. we don't have the same atmospheric conditions as England mm. Uh, famously, mm. um, which is why I played their games in the Great Barrier Reef. Mm. <laughs> it's another climate change issue. <laughs> and then, yeah, the, the, the scores when we started using Duke's balls were markedly lower. Embarrassingly and, so. In, yeah. Embarrassingly yes. low. Yeah. 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 Well, just going back to that gentry uh, element, do you feel like... No, we just talk yes. about England and the microaggressions and the way they play and how Australia's always been playing with macroaggression. And do you feel like ever since... There was a bit of spark there when everyone was able to talk shit and have facial hair and, mm. and were rough around the edges. Uh, now there's this Woman's Day brand of cricketer mm. yes. because they're cashing in on their baby's photos, on their yes. miso's new job or whatever, and the, yeah. the wife's now an influencer. And um, The wags are fucking kicking goals. I've got, mm. I've, got, mm. you know, I've got a lot of praise and respect for them. But do you reckon that is affecting the game? Do you reckon that's affecting? Do you reckon if there was a little bit more feral, perhaps there'd be well, a little bit yeah. more? yeah. Do you think it would be better if... Uh, our captain Tim Payne came out and said, "Get ready for a broken fucking arm." Certainly, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it, would, it would probably destroy his brand entirely, yeah. which he's been curating very well. Um, for the last Excuse me, so. I'm going to ask you to respectfully break your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Always are we asked? Yeah, you may you've please. got to establish Cheers. consent. That's the first thing. Okay, break someone's your arm. arm. <laughs> like, what are, don't, well, we'll put this back on you guys. I mean, like, how do you think? Because Sam and I were talking before about like there's like this undercurrent of like the old Australia which still exists because like now we've got this nice green mm. image brought about by sandpaper because like we, we basically can't be cunts anymore yeah, yeah. Mm. and then and now like we've got Tim Payne as the captain mm. beautiful face three step skin regime obviously yeah. before every game but like there still exists like this level like do you guys feel that as well there's like a level underneath that like yeah. we, we, don't, we don't buy it we don't buy the nice guy act no I saw a little bit of uh, it in Johnson um, oh yeah a little bit of the the edge, and actually a lot in Warner early days, but yeah, pre so. pre Roxy, pre uh, Candy. I reckon it has changed. Like the entire culture has sort of changed, and now we have adopted this culture of losing. Yeah, <laughs> which, which <laughs> I think, like the Wallabies, which you know, which which yeah. which I think comes from being you know like nice. Mm. Yeah, I, I think we're a bit too corporate in these games, as, especially you know in in. A game like cricket, where it's more or less a mind game, you know, mm. like you're you're stuck with the same opponent for for months on end. Mm. 
I don't think you can kill them with kindness. I mean, you could have a beer with them afterwards, but on the field, you just have yeah. to fucking out, out cunt each other. We did that. That's what yeah. we did in 1989 when we were just tired of losing. Mm-hmm. Like, 81, obviously, both them's ashes and so on. And we were pretty shit in the 80s. It was a pretty grim time. Mm-hmm. Kim Hughes resigned at a tearful resignation in the mid-80s, and we brought in Alan Border, who mm-hmm. obviously the grandfather of Australian cricket. Mm-hmm. Went over in 89 to, to England. We went when flew business class. Booney drank fifty-two beers. This was this new masculinity, mm-hmm. yeah. and we were so just there. Balls, out. balls yeah. out. We weren't Hair. going home without a victory there. And then that lasted for many, many years yeah. until really you know, two thousand and five, yeah. when yeah. you know things the started kind tips, of teetering. Frosted yeah. tips. Frosted yeah. tips came in. Frosted yeah. Creek was just exactly. finishing. Yeah. yeah, and I think yeah. that was around the the kind of metrosexual wave as well. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. man. So yeah. it kind of ties in with social trends too. Yeah. The decline of the man, really, yeah. Australian. But man. also, but the, I wouldn't necessarily say that either because it, for everything we said, and Errol just said there, where you can't kill him with kindness on the field or after. I mean, you can have a beer with them afterwards. But you can't kill them with kindness on the field. But you also shouldn't be trying to physically fight them on the way back in, and that's no. and that's another no. side of it too. That's that's a big no no, and that was the first I reckon we've ever seen um, when Warner finally spat the dummy. <laughs> and I can't, you know, I would have done the same thing, a hundred percent. But I'm not an Australian cricketer, and I don't have a brand to protect. But um, the thing is, like, we've always had identity issues. Yeah. Mm. Um, like you know, which obviously obviously goes back to reckoning with our you know indigenous genocide and stuff. Like we, we Australia's never known who Absolutely. they are, and so we always have to um, have an angle. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, Stuart Broad made a comment the other day that you know when when uh, Ricky Ponting was in charge, it was like never look at the opposition, never look at England. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to create a warrior image. When Michael Clark was there, it was get ready for a broken fucking arm, and yeah. now it's like take your shoes off and walk around the ground barefoot, yeah. wear yoga instructors, mm. wear muscular Christians now. Yeah. Apologise like, for everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apolo- like, apologising. Guys are getting selected based on their kind of love relationship with Justin Langer. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're still confused. Yeah. And yet beneath the surface, you just feel like that, that mm. anger is there. It's only going to take one or two collapses and the calls for Lehman will come back. We were at our heyday when... Trevor Hons had to hide his car whenever he posted, you know, his team, you know. Inevitably, there'd be, like, like a fast bowler in the wings, like your Gillespie's, your Caspers, who would go to his car and kick off a side mirror or something. <laughs> you, you know, it was like, inevitable. those... Yeah, it was inevitable. Like, but now you've got Stark, who is going to miss out on the first test. What's he going to do? He'll, you know, he'd go back to the hotel room and just go... Oh, bummer. Yeah. Play four, Strange, no. Strange yeah. things, two, mm. three. Mm. <laughs> Even the dressing room, though, yeah. is a very confusing time. Pez, you were just t- saying about how, you know, like in the dressing room, you've got Cameron Bancroft, you know, certified yoga instructor. Yeah, so you know, four. You know, um, Labu Shane has got an eagle, eagle? Yeah. Like an eagle on yeah. his bat. Uh, uh, referencing Isaiah from the Bible, you yes. know, Justin Langer, spirituality and stuff. But also Steve Wars there. Yeah. So Ooh. it's like... That's, those those are those worlds yeah. colliding. It doesn't make any sense. To me like the Australian cricket team is like it's like two companies have merged, mm. like and it hasn't quite gone that mm. well. They're two very different companies, different DNA. Mm. You know, you got the alpha Steve War mm. side of things and the aggression. Then you have got the new age spirituality stuff, and they're just working through that merger at the moment. Yeah, kind of like um, SBS Vice Land. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's, it's what, so two brands that's, that's coming together. Team. How do we, yeah. you know, yeah. what are the synergies? What are the deliverables? Yeah. Yeah. And um, are there going to be any layoffs? Yeah. Hopefully, and do we see any negative people? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> um, but yes, it is. There, there is. An, but also, we, we, we do. We probably are. And we spoke about this last week uh, with Marsden. There's probably a bit of misplaced nostalgia there as well, because things have been toxic in the past. Things have been very, very toxic. There's all that fucking Clark stuff. That if you speak to anyone, any deep Gen Xers, they'll tell you that Clark was the worst thing that ever happened to Australian cricket. And you know, before that, there was something. People, people used yeah. to talk shit about punter well, all the time. I think yeah. that 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 kind of more importantly he he did one thing that every captain should and he and he scored bulk runs Mm -hmm. and and i think winning and runs can override everything yeah i think behavioral issues exactly i think that when you're winning i I don't think that people tend to care about these things i just think when things get bad that's when the fingers start to come out and didn't clark play his cricket like the way australia wants to play that cricket was like just chests out 
Mitchell Johnson round the wicket bowling at tail enders, bumping people. Yeah. You know, he, like he, it was quite Obnoxious. Palmer. You know, he tapped Obnoxious. into a real like yeah. the guy that's peacocking at the pub. You know, yeah. that's what he was. Mm. He yeah. was Oops, oops. He's so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stealing yeah. drinks, yeah. taking yeah. bets. <laughs> he was very like unlike any other Australian captain before Clark. Yeah. Obviously, mm. like tattoos. Drove a Ferrari or a Porsche. He was probably the first Gen model Y model girlfriend yeah, slash Gen fiance. Y yeah. It was, it was too, it was too much hearing. for us. It was all too much, all too at once for us. <laughs> it was a lot. Fun. If you staged that out, but yeah. it just came all you know the faces yeah. too quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think he he was a healthy mix. I think between Steve Waugh and Michael Slater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where, <laughs> the best of both. Yeah. Where healthy, you just had this unbridled <laughs> aggression with just this underlying saturation of just insanity yes of mm -hmm. just you know rumors about yeah, yeah. this and that and yeah. driving the sports car and having a superman on your fucking arm mm. you, you know Carpe i, DM. I mm -hmm. think Carpe that was DM. the uh yeah yeah, yeah. But, but well, now, he was under the Shane Ward's influence very early. Yeah, he was. Remember, he was you know, first captain to go to Rockpool. I couldn't imagine like Alan yeah. Border or Mark Taylor yeah. at Rockpool necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Not, not the a real Rockpool, maybe Rockpool Bar Grill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at Trax one night in 2004, oh, yeah. um, he uh, lost an earring and uh, like Trax was a Thursday night place, $3 mm. drinks, etc. Yeah, yeah, post yeah. uni. And yeah. uh, he was sort of from around that area. And um, yeah, he, he lost an earring and uh, literally asked the the um, DJ to turn off the music and for the lights to come on so he could find it. Right. So that was, and th this was pre his selection yeah. in the Australian side. So that was, yeah. that was part. The we, was we, found, we found the earring. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely helped. <laughs> now you guys, you guys are about to head off to England, um, and you're going to be doing live shows there. Yeah. What is your reception like there, and what is your puntership look like? Well, how do you? I mean, over here, I can imagine it. There's a great cricket, a lot of kind of husky gents, a lot of Coca-Cola, vanilla Coke kind of blokes. Um, what, what are you looking at over there? I don't know vanilla Coke blokes. <laughs> I knew what you were Coke Zero. Yeah. No, no, like, yeah. like, like, it means the type of bloke who would go out and stand blazing hot sun mm -hmm. for six hours, yeah. be parched, thirsty yeah. as fuck. First thing he goes, walks past the bubbler and goes straight to his kit bag <laughs> and takes out a piping hot, <laughs> half full, fucking beat like like a long neck of Coke Zero yeah. and downs it. Yeah. And he goes and he goes, ah. Yeah. <laughs> vanilla, vanilla Coke Zero. I play with so many guys. That is the type like of rare exactly human. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, yeah, that's Australia. We're not uh, sure, actually. I mean, you know, it is a bit of a brave new world for us. Yeah. We're going over there. We know we have an audience. It's certainly in London, yeah. um, but it's the regions we don't know so much about. So yeah. Birmingham's the first show in a couple of days, frighteningly, um, and then off to Leeds and Manchester and then back to London where we have sold two shows out. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting to see what the Birmingham crowd's like first up. We've got Merv Hughes with us, so yeah. you know he'll provide some support, emotional and physical, hopefully, for us, <laughs> um, depending on how things go. Mm. And, um, and then we've got Tim Bresnan as the, the special guest for the, the Leeds and Manchester shows, who's kind of just a legend over there. Mm. So we just want people to get around us. Then maybe even if you don't know who we are, just mm -hmm. fucking turn I think up and it's get like, around us. It's going to be half expats, isn't it? And the other half are just people who are curious about Australians. And, mm. what, and what they're about. It's an anthropological experience. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Very yeah. curious. Yeah. About us. Yeah. <laughs> People who are after an anthropological uh, examination of club cricket. Yeah. I mean, if you are listening in Leeds or Manchester Just to the Petitor Advocate it. podcast, then yeah. please come along for that. And you're interested in those things. And we are naked when we go on stage, so it's yeah. full dissection. Well, I mean, one, one thing is for sure is that although we don't know who will turn up in England out... Um, Demographics uh, and analytics um, tell us that it will probably be ninety-seven percent male. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, <laughs> you can see those things now. We're trying to yeah. improve the ratio. Mm. Prom I promise you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and this still, interview should help well with that. I would imagine yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we are almost split down the middle now. That is fantastic. Fifty-fifty, just like Parliament should be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we did a show last week in Melbourne, and we had some friends. Um, uh, in the audience last week, or you guys did anyway, and we, there was like one text came through saying someone, 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 someone had said, um, there are women here, hot ones too. And then yeah. someone else, like three seconds later, sent a text saying, absolute cockfest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. bloke. Yeah. Same yeah. bloke. Just walked around yeah. the corner, well, actually, there's no women here. Yeah, he had a drink. He yeah. just walked past the hens party in the yeah. front of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got, uh, we got invited to. Um, perform at a hen's party in London. That's been part of our trip. So, we, we, like on our podcast, we take some questions, and somebody wrote in saying, 
uh, listen, listen, I never listen to your podcast. I've never listened to it at all, but my husband likes to run a bath and lie in it and listen to it and laugh uh, for 45 minutes. Um, but she was, uh, th- this woman who wrote in was... That's very vanilla cug, zero. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, ex- exactly. Run a tub you and put your boys in the Beside the, uh, the bath. But she wrote in and said... Uh, Look, I understand. I'm told that niche stripping is in at the moment, and uh, she was maid of honor, you know, for her um, for her friend. She was putting on the hens party, and she uh, has invited us uh, in a couple of weeks' time to be niche strippers at uh, her hens party. Where so we'll come dressed in whites. Have we and, um, replied yes to that yet? Yeah, we're on. It's on. Thank so. You. That's, uh, that's just before our London show. We'll, 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 we'll be doing so that some niche stripping. Explains why he goes is, is, is uh, in fairly good nick at the moment. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, about a year ago. Clancy got uh, the same invitation uh, from right. a punter of ours. Really? And, uh, For a box. Yeah. Right. I said, no, I'm not going to fucking Melbourne. <laughs> Hang out with you. <laughs> Otherwise. It's it's a location, yeah. which is a oh, thing. No, you just hate the city, yeah. 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 I mean, you guys seem like good people, but uh, Melbourne's too far. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's interesting what people will try and do for <laughs> entertainment and those kind of things. Mm. Um, that sounds like they're really... Uh, She's really stuck for ideas. Maybe it's just hard to get strippers in in mm. England. I yeah, but also mm. you guys have got pretty tidy rigs, so I think mm. they should be all right with that. Well, uh, speaking of some tidy rigs, the battle between Josh Hazelwood and young Peter Siddle. Yeah. Mm. Your tip: Who's in and who's out? Uh, Is it just between those two? Or and why? I think so. In there as well. Uh, Stark's well? out. I think he's probably more or less leaning to be a Brendan Julian type operator as opposed to the big shoes left behind by Glenn McGrath. That's a big compliment yeah. to Scarf, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah huge yeah. start. I mean, uh, the damage hit, hit Julian did in 95 Caribbean right, tour. West Indies tour, yeah. with, the, with the ball. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, as a bowler. I've got a feeling that... I've got a feel, And this will come out. Get away. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry we're still going with this, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got, it feels like Siddle to me. It feels like they're going to go with Siddle. You know, a couple of the journos are saying that they've been priming Siddle for this Ashes series for a year, keeping him in cotton wool, getting him playing county cricket. Josh Hazelwood seems to be out of form. I don't know if, you know, Justin Langer's off him. And Mitchell Stark obviously hasn't been able to move the red ball since uh, Sandpaper. So That's a coincidence. Well, yeah, and it's a yeah, total coincidence. It is a yeah, massive yeah, coincidence. coincidence. Well, Hazelwood's furious still from mm. missing out of the World Cup. He was dirty not to be there. Mm. Um, so he would be fired up, but we've already got Pattinson. Mm. who is just aggressive in his own right. So, yeah, you, what do you want there? Wouldn't it be good to see them give, like, give a young guy like Siddler a go? You know, 36-year-old <laughs> Peter Siddler a chance. You know, Sean sure Marsh is probably well, talking about no, Siddler he, I think he's the same age as Benji Marshall. You yeah. know, I, I think, you know, this is... He hasn't played. Oh. And he looks fit. <laughs> yeah. He well, he's Benji, in the UK at the moment, so yeah, he's right. looking for a game. Is yeah. Siddler still um, on the Steve Jobs diet? What's going on there? He is. Yeah. Yeah. Vegan yeah. diet, yeah. No, it's plant based Yeah, it's more than vegan. It's... Yep. It was yeah. banana. No, it was basically just bananas. It's just bananas. Yeah. 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 I. Th- I think he wasn't on the Steve Jobs diet. I think there was. I think you do have to kind of add a few more things. You know, as Legumes. as <laughs> as <laughs> as evident by the fact that yeah. Steve. Mm. Is fucking dead at the moment. <laughs> well, that was at the it. moment. That was, <laughs> the moment. The moment. <laughs> that is dead at the moment. That was Ashton Kutcher's theory. Because in the movie, Ashton Kutcher tried to do the diet, and he said, "This will kill me." He said, yeah. oh, "I'm going to see how this guy died." Yeah. So, yeah. My, yes, I mean, Siddle might be doing something a little different. Yeah. Bananas, milkshakes as well. Yeah, mm. and, and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and yeah. legumes, grains. Yeah, um, kale. Kale. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, he's not doing... I mean, some people are doing the all-meat diet. That's a new thing right now. Right. That seems healthy. Yeah. Mm. Kill well, basically everything every is just binary these days. Yeah. Like politics, it food, yeah. diets. Mm. It's just, it's gotta be something, you got, it's got to be branded. It's got to be marketable. Mm. It's got to be easily digestible in both you know, communicative and... Um, digestive. <laughs> and digestive. And snackable content, deliverable across multiple mediums. All meat. All meat. Yeah, that's a pretty solid... Breakfast is a tough one there for all meat. Like, tough to get up for a steak. At seven AM, mm. you know, mm. before you're at forty five, yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Let's put the slow cooker in overnight. Oh, that's yeah, not a bad shit. Actually, you got a cross that's what I yeah. do. Yeah, but it just yeah melts in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. So how long on the road? Sorry, yeah. Um. It's, it's whirlwind. It's like two and a half weeks. <laughs> so yeah, we get we get there. I didn't mean to yell at that. Get there in a couple of days. Uh, we're, we're back, sort of like halfway through the the Lord's test mm, yeah, just right. after. So yeah, we go around the country. 
uh, get it all done. It, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a haze, but uh, you know, hopefully we're, we're well received. Hopefully some strange things happen. It's got to be rapid now because two of us have kids now, so yeah. we've we got to get back as quick as we can. Can't be away for too long. Yeah. Has grade cricket stopped for you guys with the kids, or just in general had it stopped beforehand? Well, it never really stops. Off grade yeah, cricket. The, the, the physical playing of it stops, but <laughs> the anxiety on a Friday night, you know, doesn't What's stop. What's the weather like? Yeah, wondering what the weather's <laughs> like. Yeah, driving yeah. past grounds, watching the yeah. game yeah. while you should be keeping your eyes on the road, and just wondering if you were better than that bloke. The day my son was born, we went up to the postnatal ward, and there was a cricket game visible outside from the window, and I couldn't help but look out and just wonder what was going on, and just looked at the scoreboard, check what the deck was doing. Yeah, <laughs> moving a bit. Yeah, a few you're, you're a taking the first, first session. Time. Like, Do you want to see your son? Oh, no, fuck. <laughs> Oh, this deck's doing yeah. it. See how Sydney, Sydney Uni 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm now driving past grade grounds, you know, how's that? Like, I've yeah, come full circle. Yeah. 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 With, With a really gun out the window. Cathartic. <laughs> <laughs> gun out the window. A rifle. It's a tribute yeah. to Glenn McGrath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how's that shit? <laughs> uh, well, he was yeah. in a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa. Mm. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, I hope you enjoy that horribly bad place you're about to go to, which is Birmingham. And um, <laughs> we'll get there. It's like ten seconds. Fuck. Okay. It's a good Sorry. It's a good show. The great cricketer, thank you for joining us this week. We've had a we had a wonderful show, and good luck over there, boys, and good luck to Australia. Um, Maybe maybe it is time for a bit of a, a reckoning. Maybe it is time for us to look at our cultural deficit. But um, as you, as these boys have pointed out today, we might actually fucking win. So yep. fingers crossed. Thank Jeez. you, Errol. Thank you, Clancy. Thanks. Thanks.